is a warm afternoon in Tallahassee, Florida at Doak Campbell Stadium. Florida State is in control of the football game at halftime by a 23 to nothing score over the Miami Hurricane. It's been the Florida State defense that has been utterly dominant. Ryan Clement, quarterback for Miami, has taken a pounding in the first half of play. Had to go out a couple of times with aches and pains. The defense for Miami needs to step up. They've been unable to cause Busby much discomfort. Butch Davis <clears throat> trying to rally his troops. They're down by 23, and he's got a pretty good sales job on his hands, what with the limited amount of personnel he has in hand. We begin the second half with Florida State. Jermaine Stringer receiving the ball a yard deep in the end zone, losing his balance as he tried to cut back and falls down at the six-yard line, and that'll get him some conversation. The Dean Witter halftime stats. The Hurricanes minus 17 yards rushing. Average yards per play, not very good. Average starting position, uh, plus 46 on the own, their own 46 for the Seminoles. Only three first downs for Miami, 13 for Florida State. Domination has been pretty well complete to this point, but the Seminoles have to start now with their own goal line at their back. First down at the six-yard line. Busby, obviously, is the quarterback. He turns and hands the ball to Dee Feaster. Feaster started the game. He starts the second half. So Davey Ford played a lot. And the gain will be up to about the nine. So give him three on the carry. Make it second down and seven. I think what went on at halftime, Keith, is you know, Butch is trying to say, hey, just come out. We need to come out and, and, and just play good football. Offensively, get some drives together, get some momentum going. And, and not necessarily, I don't think he's fooling anybody. Let's go out and win this game. Nope. They just go out and create some positive plays on offense and defense to step up and stop somebody so we can build something for the rest of the season. Busby wants to throw. Ball is slapped out of his hand by Derek Ham just as he released it. And it's an incomplete forward pass. Here's Lynn Swan. Well, Keith, Bob must have been sitting on my shoulder when I was talking to Butch Davis because that's some of the things, those are some of the things he said. He said also on the offense, Get what we want to do is try and establish some kind of running attack to take the pressure off their passing game and just move the ball down the field. Also, of course, Bob, he wants to protect his quarterback. He didn't say which one's going to start for him in the second half. Well, I think Lenny's doing the right thing in playing them both. Uh, it's not the quarterback's fault uh, that the offense has not been productive. Feaster riding over the left side. And Feaster is very close to a first down. Looks like he might be, well, let me want to measure this one. It's that close. Rod Mack made the tackle. Well, they came in 1-3. They leave 1-4. and four. There's still six games to play. And you need something to build toward next year when new people will be coming in. Be another turnover in manpower. And the good thing that Miami now, Keith, is in a conference. They're in the Big East, and they've been there for several years. So they can go and, and play for a conference championship or a conference tie or to finish first or second in the conference. Where they were an independent, they didn't have anything to play for after they lost a couple of games. They're about a foot short. And Florida State, with the ball resting at their own 16-yard line, sends out the punting team. And this is the first punt since the first possession to start the game. That was a 35-yarder by Keith Cottrell. High snap. But he handles it. Gets a pretty good kick out of it. It's Starks, Dwayne Starks, looking for a little help, and there isn't any. He just has to turn to his own feet and do with it what he can, and he'll come back to about the Florida State 43. 41-yard punt to 15-yard return. Well, the old road show moves along next Saturday on regional college football here on ABC. Uh, this afternoon, you'll see Iowa, Ohio State at Columbus. That's a big ball game in the Big Ten. The definition will come out of that. Out west, it's Notre Dame and Stanford. And in the mountains, Texas A&M and Colorado. That's regional coverage. Check your local listing. Notre Dame-Stanford game would be a good one, too. I think so. 
So here are the Knowles now with their best field position of the day. And they were not able to improve it on James Carey there. He was taken down, and the quarterback is Ryan Clement. The Hurricanes, Keith, threw 14 times or attempted to pass 14 times in the first half, and the quarterback was hit on eight of those 14 uh, attempts to pass. So not a lot of protection, and you got to throw quick. Second down and 10. Referee throws the flag. Substitution and fracturing on the offense. Second time that's been called on the, Miami the, the today. The problem is with the substitutions, they had three wide receivers and then and a tight end and two backs. They had 12 guys in the huddle, and, and it was Edger and James who was, uh, who was the guilty uh, person, and he left after they came out and lined up, and the official just threw a flag. They do that, I mean, that was a mistake, but, but if you start planning and try to trick teams, that's why they have that rule. Almost lost that snap. Passes away to the sidelines and caught by Magic Benton. But he's knocked out of bounds short of the first down. And mark him at the 38-yard line, and they've got to go down to about the 33 for the first down. In the spring, Clement had three wide receivers that he was counting on, veterans. Roll, or more, or more roll. Omar Roll, Magic <laughs> Benton, it's catching you down there, Hoss, and Jamie German. And and Benton was just kind of disappeared. You know, he was running wrong routes at the wrong time. He wasn't consistent. He couldn't count on where he was going to be. He's playing better in this ball game here today. Pressure coming third and five passes by Samari Roll. It Going right to him. Uh, Clement didn't have any choice. He had to get rid of it or eat it. And he tried to force it, and it didn't work. So there's a turnover for Florida State. And this time, the Seminoles get a little bit of field position out of it. National Car Rental, we believe that when it comes to renting a car, there's really only one place to go. Because at most major airports in America, National gets you in your car and on the road fast. So what are you waiting for? Let's go. National Car Rental. Let's go. You gotta have fire. Slap and lap and fancy flames flicking chicken from every side. Until marinated bird and garlic and lime has turned from good too sublime. Oh, what has Chili's thus created? Why, it's margarita grilled chicken consummated. Served horizontally, grill marks up on a tostada with a lot of what your mouth waters for. That rib stick and margarita grilled chicken. Cause Chili's grills like no place else. So what are we going to do tomorrow? Saturday! The new redesigned Ford Ranger. The only compact pickup built Ford tough. This Tuesday. Hold it right there! Andy and Bobby are back in business. Let's go. It feels good, doesn't it? All new blue. ABC Tuesday. Florida State leading it 23 to nothing. Let's go back and take a look. The last interception. The defensive line are here. These are the linebackers. One here, there's one here, one here. And this is a strong safety. He'll be the one that forces the bad throw to Clement. They can't block them all, so he throws it. And Samari Rowe picks it off. Now, he was working against a true freshman in Reggie Wayne. Wayne did not run his route right and protect, protect the throw. Davey Ford on this carry on first down for Florida State. And he's... Corralled at about the line of scrimmage. Here's 20. And Bob Keith, let me tell you what that receiver should have done. And these young freshman receivers are having problems getting off the line of scrimmage and bump and run. He's got to get a good release to the outside, 
drive the defensive back hard, even if it's just for five years, to get the defensive back to turn his shoulders running down the field. Then make his break to the outside. He creates a cushion that way and a better lane for the quarterback to throw the football. Got to have a cushion. And then hammer him so he doesn't make the interception. That pass is completed to Lavernius Coles. And uh, they take him down just about the marker. No trouble. Tavokius Bonner, number 19, on the tackle for Miami. Mickey Andrews, a defensive coordinator, has got to be pleased. Oh, Mickey's right into his fight factor talk now. <laughs> he lost two defensive ends that were number one draft choices, and he came back, and he's got an outstanding defensive line again this year. And the advantage for him is he can get pressure with those front four. He doesn't have to send those linebackers and safeties very often. Kind of funny, isn't it? Though? Mickey Andrews always got a good defensive football. Team. <laughs> yeah, they, they, pretty know, good coach. <laughs> the pressure style of football, and it started with uh, you know with he and Charlie McBride at Nebraska and some of the other guys around the country. Everybody's pressuring now, bump and run on the outside, the pressure with the defensive line and the linebackers, fake blitz, blitz. That's why you can't run anymore, because there's so many guys up at the line of scrimmage. They're forcing you to throw. Florida State getting the first down on the quarterback sneak. will turn, hand the ball to Davey Ford now. And Ford will go for four or five yards before Rod Mack can run him down for the Hurricanes. It's a 23 to nothing ball game at 10.35 to go in the third quarter. That interception by Samari Roll a moment ago was his first of the season and the sixth of his career. Going back to last year's ball game, including what we had today and last year, starting the third quarter, Miami had gained 59 yards on 59 carries, rushing against the Florida State's defense. Davy Ford loses his footing as he tries to make his cut. Yard on the play, it'll be third down. And a very long three. It's four yards, actually. FSU has played, this is their fourth game, Keith, and two of the three games they only won by seven points, so they were doing anything they could to win. Against Maryland, though, they won big, had a chance to work on their running game, and really didn't. It looks like here they might uh, might be trying to say, all right, let's see if we can run the football a little bit, not on third long. Has a quick little pass thrown by Thad Busby to Damian Harrell, and uh, he was in front of Dwayne Starks. Starks has had a pretty good day defensively for the Canes. And the mark gives him a first down right near the 40-yard line. Starks is one of the left from last year's defensive team for the Hurricanes. Pretty good player. The kickoff there. Almost had another one. Knocked another one down. The Hurricanes lost eight starters off this defense. Six were drafted, Keith. So uh, they had to rebuild this thing. They're 86th in the nation coming into the ball game today. Davy Ford. He'll have another Florida State first down. Miami now showing some fatigue. The defense has been on the field a lot. It's a hot day. And Ford just slashed him for a first down. Black down, they're going to lose that first down. Davy Ford doing a nice job running behind that offensive line. Uh, Long, Heaven, Thomas, Whitaker, and Brandon. Illegal procedure is flagged against Florida State, brings the Knowles back to the 45 yard line, and so Davy loses that nice 14 yard run. The Seminoles have always had a lot of penalties, Keith. They've led the conference in penalties the last couple of years, but. I don't think Bobby minds that, and I don't think Mickey Andrews minds it. I think I think they'd rather be aggressive and intimidate uh, and get some penalties along the way than, than not. This is Ford working in traffic. And he picks up about four before Robert Hall can sit on him. So now it'll be third down and long, third and 12. Menace 13 out there. 
Harold number eight comes in. Darrell Bush. And two quarterbacks. Menace and uh, Warwick go to the top. Harold to the bottom, second and 12. After the penalty, remember you regain your down. And out of the shotgun, a little quick pop out to Ford. Ford's double teamed on the sidelines and out of bounds just inside the 40. Davey Ford, a freshman out of West Palm, playing a lot today as planned. That's right, Keith. And, and, and Bobby recruited, he always recruits well, but he got two of the top running backs in the nation. In fact, Travis Miner, who is a true freshman running back on this ball club, uh, was uh, voted the outstanding offensive player. But uh, Davey Ford is getting an opportunity uh, here today uh, to, uh, to be that number one running back. You can never have too many if you can keep them happy. Now, and, and Travis Miner was banged up earlier. Look at this pass. They give the quarterback Busby all that time and he absolutely drilled Menace with the pass right between two defenders. Well, two things, Keith. He had a lot of time to throw from behind the defense. And watch as it opens up a big gaping hole. And what that means is you can see well. You see everybody. You see the linebackers. You see the receiver. Menace is going to come just inside of Popovich, number 33. And, but, but good protection and good sight lines there. Ford out, minor in. Change at running back now for Florida State. Giving Davy a breather. Been working hard. He wasn't happy about it coming out, though. See that? Here's Miner slashing up into the middle and not much. So on first down, he picks up a couple. The ball is resting at about the 15 yard line. Seven minutes to go in the third quarter and 23 0 Florida State. Remember, you've got regional action coming later here on ABC. Notre Dame at Stanford, Iowa at Ohio State. The most shocking score I've seen today was the way Oklahoma State was handling Texas. This is Travis Miner, a freshman out of the city of the Red Stick, Baton Rouge, and he's down to the 10. Well, I don't know. You know, we thought Texas was going to be good, but they got, they got romped by UCLA. And uh, before today, Oklahoma State really had not played anybody. Anybody. Yep. Here's Swanee. Now, Keith, Florida State is accomplishing one thing on the ground, advancing the rushing yards. You recall in 1996, they averaged 178 yards with work done, only 38 yards a game coming into this contest. Right now, they have just over 75 yards on the ground. On third and four, Travis go for the first down first and goal at the three and Lamar Glenn number 31 in it fullback was a good blocking back on that play nice job by Travis Miner. 13th play of the drive Take a look from behind the defense Whitaker 68 pulls but there really is not a clear hole there he really has to jump around and find a spot to get through. And then have the strength to make something out of it. Yeah. So it's first and goal. These Two back just, set. Just puppies, Keith, would you like to say, running backs? They fake a reverse, give it a minor inside, down at the five-yard line. That's a pretty good play by 58 and 22. Jeffrey Taylor and Leonard Myers. I don't know. I'm a, I, I just, I'm an old believer in the north to south yeah, stuff. I, I, I'm the not big line. on faking reverses and reverses uh, when you get inside the 20 yard line, and especially when you get inside the five. Especially when you got a whoop team sitting across from you. <laughs> go straight ahead this time. Scores, touchdown. That is Travis Miner's first career touchdown. It certainly won't be his last.
Janikowski for the point. Good. 4.45 to play third quarter. Score now, Florida State 30 and Miami nothing. Say neither, either, either, neither, neither. Let's call the whole thing off. You like potato, I like potato. I like tomato, you like tomato, potato, potato, tomato, tomato. Let's call the whole thing off. Call everything off and go exploring in a Ford Explorer. These days it seems like everything is the official something of somebody. What's next? The official soft drink? The team mascot? Look at this guy right here. And this one here. And his girlfriend and his kid. See? See, they're drinking Dr. Pepper just because it tastes great. It's kind of the official soft drink of everyone else. Like this guy with the proper. He executes a one-handed switch. You can't coach the stuff. It's a thing of beauty. Hey, who's doing that? I do that. What's going on? Hey. Some of the most admired cars you'll see are owned by the guys who know cars best. They're ASC certified master mechanics. And the number one brand of motor oil these guys use in their own cars and trucks is Valvoline, makers of DuraBlend, the leading semi-synthetic for a cleaner engine due to better control of harmful deposits. So use the oil the mechanics who take care of your car use to take care of theirs. Valvoline. People who know use Valvoline. presentation of college football brought to you by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? By Budweiser, Beachwood aged for a crisp, clean, classic taste. By Best Western, Best Western, across the street from Ordinary. And Burger King, where you can get your burgers worth. Thirty to nothing on the warm afternoon. Janikowski will kick it away now, and it's Trent Jones and Jeff Popovich. Neither of which, <laughs> neither of which is he. Nay. <laughs> well, that's a block. Look at that thing. It hit the upright. Well, we talked about Florida State's pressuring defense. We just thought. There's four wide receivers. It's a spread formation here. The defensive backs are not playing off. They're up pressuring the wide receiver. As the play develops and the quarterback is ready to throw, the wide receivers, but there's no separation between the defensive back and the wide receiver. There's a fox in the hen house, and the quarterback has to run the football. So this is the style of defense that the Hurricanes are facing today, and these freshman wide receivers just can't get loose and shake them. And we come to first down for the Hurricanes, the beleaguered Canes. Ryan Clement, back in there at quarterback, throws the ball. It is complete to the tight end, Franks. And Daniel Franks will pick up a first down. Now let's look around here and see if we're getting a lot of substitutions on the Florida State defensive side of the ball. No, I don't see a lot yet. Wadsworth is still on the field. If you start talking about this season and four or five games into the season, and surprises either up or down. The Hurricanes have to be one of the big surprises, starting out one and three, and then they're going to be one and four after this ball game. This is Jones. Trent Jones. Rocking his way in there for a couple of yards. The Florida State opponents in the games played in 97 so far. 128 rushes for 97 yards. That's less than a yard per rush. And today, the 19 rushes by Miami has produced only 17 yards. So that gives you some measure of the kind of defensive front the people are facing. And, and they lost a lot of those players on the defensive line. They certainly did. They moved Wadsworth from tackle outside, however, and it was a question of whether or not they were going to weaken two positions to strengthen one, and it's turned out that other people stepped up and played well. Budweiser withstood the test of time. It's 
has over 120 year heritage. That heritage is there for one simple reason, because of the people behind the brand Budweiser, and most importantly, because quality was never compromised. Beer is like a food, and just like any natural food with no additives and preservatives, fresh food does indeed taste better. A beer is the best it will ever be when it leaves the brewery. You can look exactly at how fresh Budweiser is through our Born On dating system. It tells you when that product was made and how fresh that product is in the marketplace. There's a lot of pride and tradition in the beer business, and that's what we're about. We're about people, about families, and about selling the highest quality beer products in the world. Trailers for sale or rent Rooms to let 50 cents Mama, man of means by no means King of the road Two hours of pushing from buys And eight, twelve, four bedroom Mama, man of means by no means King of the road Yes, that's a bright sun, and it's hot. That touchdown that Florida State scored a moment ago on a 14-play, 63-yard march, that's their longest scoring drive of the season. They used seven minutes and 41 seconds. That may be the sign of a maturing offense, too. The intended receiver, Reggie Wayne, uh, again, didn't run a, the kind of pattern that his quarterback expected. He got caught inside, lost his footing a bit, and then could not get back to the ball. So the youngsters are learning yeah and here's a look at florida state defensively they are helping them learn yes <laughs> putting knots on them yeah. this may be the best group of linebackers in the country with bush in the middle and coward on the outside and the lamont green uh, very good set of linebackers it is third down and seven. Oh, the ball is snapped over clement's head Poor Ryan, he goes down and takes one more lick. So the ball got away from Mike Wainer, trying to snap it to Clement out of the shotgun. I mean, that wasn't even close. Nope. That ball went straight. You've got to be seven feet five to catch this ball. So now they'll have to punt it. Crossland comes back, and he stands on the inside the goal line, about a yard deep in the end zone. almost blocked. Yep. And the reception is made by Dee Fister up around the 41-yard line. 28-yard punt, and here's Swan. Thank you, Keith. I consider myself a little handy guy around the house, so let me give you the Home Depot coaches fact here. Ten years ago, October 3rd, 1987, these two teams played. It was a one-point ball game, 25-26. Uh, Florida loses to Florida State, loses to Miami. But on the field, on both rosters that day, there were 57 players, Keith, 57 that played at least one year in the National Football League. Now, I don't know if there's ever been that much talent ever assembled in one game in college football history. If anybody knows, call us on America Online. The key, not, key words, ABC Sports. All right, we've got Dan Kendra in at quarterback now, and Vanez Gooch is in at running back in a 30 to nothing ball game, Florida State. Dan Kendra, quite a celebrated uh, freshman coming out of Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. When he came back, however, he's a weight he loves weightlifting. He just lifts and lifts and lifts, and eats all that protein and all that stuff. And he spent the summer over there lifting weights and eating protein and all that, and he came in, he weighed about 270 pounds, and the coach is almost fainted. Mark Rich uh, said, well, you're going to lie at a linebacker. Yeah. <laughs> How do you like linebackers? About two weeks later, he weighed uh, 240. So the pass, and he's a good one. He's, he's got a chance to be a very good quarterback, and he's the heir apparent. But Chris Wenke is also dueling with him. Right now, let's spend a moment with John Saunders. Keith, time for the Burger King update. Penn State against the Illini. Curtis Enos takes a big hole. Pulls a couple of guys over and takes this one to the end zone. He has 13 carries for 104 yards, and Penn State leads it 27-6. And, of course, 
Penn State has Ohio State ahead here on ABC. Back to you. And I am really looking forward to that. Next week, uh, mm -hmm. we'll be in uh, Happy, Happy Valley. Valley. Oh, yes. Little Red Schoolhouse. <laughs> All those things. Ball thrown to the corner and incomplete menace. The intended receiver, and that was well defended. Well, they're working on uh, Starks over there. And any time a guy is aggressive like Starks is, he's had one interception today and almost another. You can do that little pump and go. And that's what, uh, that's what they were trying. Menace, number 13. He didn't do a very good job of selling the short one and then going long because Starks just was following him down the field. Kendra faked like he was going to throw a short pass, but Starks had that covered. Second down and 10. Holds out, good touch on the ball, delivered to William McCray. And McCray is shoved out of bounds at about the 20. On the, he's got to force the 20 on the mark that he's got a first down, and he does. That's a 19. McCray is out of Jacksonville. He's a freshman. Coming into the ball game when he made his appearance, Kendall was 6 of 8 for 105 yards and a couple of touchdowns. He came in relief of Busby last year in a game which was injured and had a huge game. Yep. So he's very capable. Oh, yeah. He's, uh, and, and, I, and, I, and I, you know, they're down... They've got Miami down 30 to nothing, Keith, and they bring in the backups. And I, I say, go ahead and let him play. Let him throw. I mean, he, he works just as hard as anybody else. You don't, just, you don't bring in the backups, the second string guys, and just run out the clock on the ground. And you nope. let him throw. Kendra, showing good mobility, throws the ball toward uh, the tight end, Pearson, uh, Pearsall, but uh, Melvin can't come up with it. Ball was thrown behind him a bit. He's a good athlete. He's writes a little column in the student uh, student newspaper around here a physical fitness column. he's a black belt <laughs> it was interesting Mark Ricks is, I called his dad I said listen he's 270 <laughs> so if he doesn't lose some weight he's gonna be at linebacker Gooch trips a bit he lost his footing there's a hole uh, the turf came up right out there in the field and Dan's patching it right now Tonight at 7 Eastern Time on ESPN, Wisconsin and Northwestern. Action out of the Big Ten. Badgers, not quite what everybody thought they were going to be so far, but still they're 3-1. They're and one. Ron Dane is the big man in this attack. Northwestern, on the other hand, lost Dwayne Bates to injury in the ball game against Oklahoma, and they've been stumbling a bit ever since. That's tonight at 7 o'clock on ESPN. Wisconsin and Northwestern. That ball's thrown high. Yeah. Thrown hard and thrown high. Yeah. He had him. Pete Warwick was available. Yeah. Well, you need to play him. you got to play. You can't just uh, hang around and play in practice and uh, watch from the sidelines. Right. you got to go out there in the heat. It's, you're exactly right. The games are so much different than practice. I mean, they're, they're playing with live bullets out there. I mean, in practice, it's just it's just fun and games. But uh, this, is, this is where you really get out and get your timing. Sebastian Janikowski. Missed from 48, made from 45. This is 38. And he missed. Well, he was looking for the hook and didn't get it. He got a little bit too much. Go, go, go. <clears throat> Our Marriott moment this week, 1991, number one, Florida State, number two, Miami, 29 seconds to play. This could be for a national championship. It's up. Toto Bocci. Oh, does that bring back memories? Janikowski's huh? miss was wide right. High looping pass thrown downfield for Reggie Wayne. Hand fighting with the defender. Pay Cody. And couldn't come up with it, though. Give him credit. He came close. Probably the best effort that uh, he's made today, and he's going off holding a hand. Wayne brings back uh, some uh, reflections to Michael Irvin. University of Miami Hurricane, who as a freshman played and did very well. 
don't think he held on to that one, but uh, Edgy Wayne uh, is going to be a fine player in this program. Keith. Second down and ten. Heading toward the close of quarter number three. This is Trent Jones. He stretches for about three yards. Twenty, it must be hot down there. Hey, hey, Jay. <laughs> and the quarter's over. So at the end of three, it's 30 to think Florida State over Miami, and we'll be back after this message and the word from our ABC station. Sea turtles. They bury their eggs in some tropical beach. When the eggs hatch, the babies find their way to the water and across miles of ocean. Now, we also have this built-in sense of direction when we're in our own shells. Karin, the car navigation system from Philips Magnavox. It shows exactly how to get to where you want to go. Man has finally caught up with nature. Ford Explorer, when no town's big enough for the both of you. Have you driven a Ford lately? Undefeated Patriots, the undefeated Bronco. Don't miss the big shootout on ABC's Monday Night Football. Bring on the game now! At Artistic Flowers on Mikasuki Road, we help convey your special thoughts on those occasions that demand the very best, whether across town or around the world. Artistic Flowers, 222 Rose. That's 222-7673. Tallahassee, the place we call home. Nestled among canopy roads, rolling hills, and majestic oaks, Tallahassee's beauty stems not only from its lush landscapes, but also from the celebrated spirit of her community. For over 15 years, Parish Builders has grown and moved with the rhythms of this beautiful city. After all, Tallahassee is our home too. At Artistic Flowers on Mikasuki Road, we help convey your special thoughts on those occasions that demand the very best, whether across town or around the world. Artistic Flowers, 222 Rose. That's 222-7673. News Channel 27 is ABC. This is College Football on ABC Sports. Well, here's your final quarter. On a football team that came in ranked number four in the nation, the Florida State Seminoles, and they look like a number four team today, frankly, but then they're playing Miami at the same time, and Miami has not put any pressure on them. The Florida State defense has dominated the Miami offense. And the Florida State offense has pretty much had its own way. Here's an interception thrown right into the hands of Shevin Smith. And Shevin Smith is just short of the goal line. It took old Seven forever today to earn a scholarship. But once he got that scholarship and started eating steak, he turned into a tiger, and he just almost ran that one into the end zone. Seven Smith, uh, like you said, deep was a walker. He scored three touchdowns on defense last week, last year. Here he is over here. Clement is going to look at the receiver. He's going to be coming from this side. Now watch to the right side. Shevin Smith, number 30. Clement never sees him. The ball is deflected. And some players just have a knack of being at the right place at the right time, Keith, and timing things. He intercepted a pass for a touchdown. He picked up a fumble for a touchdown. And he returned a, a block punt for a touchdown last year. And he almost had that one in the end zone. Roland Seymour was the man that tipped it. It is Smith's second score. Second interception of this season. Hand off to the tailback. And it's Travis Miner who is 
at 190 pounds, one of the bigger running backs. He scores. There's Shevin. Yeah, you know, Keith, it's interesting. You know, all the talk about all the recruiting and the great players in the state of Florida and how good a recruiter Bobby Bowden is. Both Shevin Smith and Andre Wadsworth, two of the top players on his defense, walked onto this program and didn't get a scholarship until after they were in here two years. Here's your touchdown, Travis Miner getting his second of the day and career. So Dan Kendra comes in and engineers a touchdown. Those are the kind of drives you like. Yes, sir. <laughs> you start on the, uh, what, on the three-yard line or the two-yard line? Well, you know, the other player that we saw earlier this year, Jerome Payton at Washington, he, uh, he sent the coaches tapes and said, hey, guys, look at my tapes, will you? Yeah. And they almost broke their leg getting up there to get him. So at 14-12 to play in the game, it's a 37 to nothing ball game. No. Kids are cool. Too cool for a family car. So check out a new Chevy Lumina LTZ. It could be the best disguised family car on the road. You'd never guess by looking at it, but no six-passenger car in its class offers more standard safety features for the money. So don't worry. Get a Lumina LTZ. If that doesn't make your kids think you're cool, nothing will. Western in New York City is conveniently located right in the middle of everything. Best Western, across the street from Ordinary. American Express and Thrifty Car Rental bring you a great travel offer. So call Thrifty Car Rental at 1-800-4-CARS. Not only does Thrifty have great rates on great cars available 24 hours a day at one easy number, use your American Express card right now for a mid-sized car for only $36.95 a day. Just $36.95 a day for American Express card members. Call 1-800-4-CARS or your professional travel agent. It's quick, it's easy, and best of all, it's Thrifty. Monday, it's a date with history, where dolls are hot, gangsters fought, and Logan has one shot to keep this dame alive. Time Cop, followed by Monday Night Football. Janikowski will kick it away now for Florida State, leading 37-0 with Jeff Popovich and James Jackson, the beat people. Popovich hasn't had a chance to run with it yet been back there all day. Jackson is a tailback. Trent Jones has been back there on the norm with Popovich, but he's getting a little rest here. for the 20. It's been a tough year, uh, Keith, for Ryan Clement. He's a fourth-year senior. He's uh, anticipating some big things to happen this year, but everything kind of fell apart with the uh, with the, the lack of depth and the lack of scholarships, losing Jamie German and Yatiel Green coming out last year, and the frustrations that have built up each of the losses, losing at Pittsburgh, losing Arizona State, all the losses at home, they used to be dominant in the Orange Bowl. That streak has long since passed. And I think in answer to one of the reporters' questions in Miami, you know, what's wrong with the uh, Hurricanes? Or is it Butch Davis's fault? Or what's wrong with your poor play? I think, I think in frustration, 
he, he, he lashed out at some of the, the old players and the old teams that put the, the Hurricanes on this probation that they're on and got them this uh, scholarship reduction. The crowd was hooting on that incomplete pass. Uh, Chris Jones, on, the on, tight now, end, I mean, he tackled the pass rusher for Florida State, but no call on it. They were giving him the business on that side of the field. Some of the uh, some of the players getting back to Clement on the Dolphins, who ex, ex uh, Hurricanes, were offended by some of his remarks. And, uh, he said it in frustration. I think part of it is true. But There's a penalty flag. You know, because always when when a, when a program goes down, like Oklahoma in 1988 when Switzer was there. It's, it's not the guys that are there that suffer. They graduate and leave. It's the ones that come after that where the sanctions are imposed, like losing all the scholarships for the last three years that have affected this team this year. It's finally hit home against the Hurricanes this year, and everybody's feeling it. And I think Clement was just frustrated. Well, he's also partly right that, uh, I mean, uh, all these people who broke the rules and left it hanging over their head, you know, they ought to go look in the mirror. Well, there's some truth to that. It wasn't all that, but there's definitely some truth to it. The story came out of Texas Tech, you know, 76 athletes ineligible. Uh -huh. They went because of various infractions because somebody didn't know the rules, tell them how to do it. Here's a pass that is completed to Daryl Jones, a sprinter out of uh, Dallas, Texas. He has world-class speed. But he hasn't had a chance to get upfield and, and show it to you. Troy Saunders was there for the tackle. You know, you and I have done, as we look at the uh, players of the game coming up a little bit later, you and I have done several of these games, Keith, the Florida State-Miami games. And, and, and this, this one more than any that I can remember, by far, did not, did not come in. There wasn't the, 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 the feeling from the coaches from Florida State or Miami or the players when we saw them out here. It just wasn't wasn't the same. Little drop off to Nick Williams. And uh, Nick reaching for the first down is going to be stopped at a, just short of the 30 and just short of the first down. So that'll bring up fourth and about a yard and they'll punt it away. At the conclusion of today's game, we'll pick Chevrolet's most valuable player from each team. Today, Chevrolet awarding over six and a half million dollars to the scholarship fund of America's colleges and universities. Andy Crossland, running. One of the better kicks of the day for him. And it runs Feaster all the way back to the 29-yard line, and there he is taken down. With 12 minutes and 20 seconds to go in the ball game, 37 to nothing. I love you. Florida State. Everybody up the ride. Never met a quarterback. Never, never, never met a quarterback I like. I want to take him out. It's a sissy. They're a bunch of pretty boys. Pretty boys. No if and buts about it. A bunch of. Watch out. <laughs> <laughs> Easy to intimidate. I can taste it when I hit him hard. Easier to dominate. <laughs> Just a bunch of prima donnas. Take out the prima donna. Ooh. Prima donna. That's what I'm paid to do. I'm just shocked they know the word prima donna. Ooh. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I know a place. This is not a country for wimps. We invented the cowboy, the jawbreaker, and the quarterback blitz. I'll take you there. And we are rough on our cars. So get a new Chevy Malibu. Your first scheduled tune-up's at 100,000 miles. Engine coolant, five years or 150,000 miles. Transmission fluid, forget about it. We're talking the automotive equivalent of Rocky Balboa. The car you knew America could build. The brand new Chevy Malibu. Oh! ABC Sports presentation of college football brought to you by Genuine Chevrolet, the cars more Americans trust. By Nike.
by Marriott Hotels, Resorts, and Suites. We believe when you're comfortable, you can do anything. And by Domino's Pizza, who brings you their newest crust sensation, Pesto Crust. And Florida State will come to the attack again, leading 37 to nothing with Dan Kendra at quarterback. Vanez Gooch is the deep back. Kendra stepping back to throw the ball. Gets some heat and takes a sack at about the 17-yard seven, line. Here's John. All right, Keith, thanks a lot. Damian Craig, one of the outstanding quarterbacks this year, having a terrific year. Eight yards to Tyrone Goodson for a second touchdown pass of the day to go. 17 of 29 for 213 yards and a 14-6 lead. Keith. Bobby was talking yesterday in his office about uh, his son, Terry, at Auburn, and the philosophy up there of opening up the offense. Damian Craig going. So the people up there it took him a while to get used to it. But uh, they really feel like you have to throw first and run second. Uh, in the way they're playing uh, college football these days. It was second and 21 as Davy Ford took that pitch and picked up 11 yards. It is now uh, maybe 12 yards and it's third and nine. Well, I refuse to get into all of this uh, touting and uh, promoting of the Heisman at this point of the season. But they've sure got a full-blown thing going up there for Craig, and they're late getting it started, but his play, I guess, works. It. Well, there's a lot of, I think, I still think that there's, you know, a lot of players around. Uh, it was strange that you haven't heard anything about Kate Manning. That's right. This is Kendra. Quarterback drops his shoulder and hammers away. Uh, yeah, you give a weightlifter some wheels and get him going downhill, and he'll run 47 yards for you. I think Keith, when you look at him, you just say after. Yep. Like Scott Cross, a lot like him. Yeah. He's That's just, quick, boy. Well, he's making these guys miss too. I can't imagine him at 268, 270 pounds. He's only 6'2". <laughs> I wouldn't want to run into him. That is the biggest rush of the year as that pass goes awry. And it's turned in to the backup quarterback, Dan Kimbra, who is only a sophomore in eligibility. 20. I, I got to tell you, I was standing right on the sideline when Kendra came over. I mean, he just jumped up, his eyes wide open. I, you know, I think the coach may have made a mistake, Bob. Instead of linebacker, it should be fullback. <laughs> <laughs> well, he ran a lot in high school. This is Davey Ford. And Davey slashes to the right side. He's very quick. Backs his feet and makes that cut with some power. And he'll have the ball just inside the 20. Well, Miami's had a disappointing start, Keith. There's no question about it. But when you start talking about different, you know, Notre Dame is one and three. Look at USC is one and two. If you talk about programs that you'd be surprised at, I mean, Miami, Notre Dame, and USC, after four or five weeks of the season, only having one win apiece. Syracuse off to another disappointing start. Well, you, I'll tell you what, though, when you come down, you expect to in Florida State and Tallahassee. Uh, I don't care who you are, you're going to get, you're liable to get your ears boxed. And uh, the fact that uh, Miami has had the poor start and they're short of people and all of that, even if they had everybody, they might still get their ears boxed because this oh, is a pretty oh, good football no, no, team. I, you know, I'm not saying, I'm not talking about today's game. I'm yeah. just talking about college football in general and teams that are starting out a little slow. I mean, other teams are, are doing quite well. Including Purdue, the Boilermakers. Oh, they're on top of the mountain. Yeah, yeah. You get me? And rolling. Anybody want to hear about it? I can tell you all about it. I've been listening to it for two weeks. <laughs> that kick is good from 37 yards by Janikowski. And at 9.15 to play in the game, it's now 40 to nothing.
There are two sides to every Monte Carlo. Monte Carlo. The side you show the world is up to you. to the house with the latest flavor that everybody loves. Domino's Pesto Crust Pizza. Seasoned with garlic, basil, and parsley. Baked into a classic hand-tossed crust. Sprinkled with zesty herbs and tangy Romano cheese. Always made fresh when you call and delivered hot to your house. Now order any large one-topping pizza for $9.99 and get a second one of equal or lesser value for $5.99. If you want the theater experience, without that theater experience, get a home theater system at Circuit City and enjoy it in the privacy of your own home. Circuit City, you can't get a lower price. We guarantee it. 40 to nothing, Florida State has the lead over Miami. Monday night, 9 Eastern time, you will have ABC's NFL Monday Night Football, New England Patriots, Denver Broncos, Patriots 4-0, Broncos 5-0, and, and Time Cop will be before in some places and after in other places. So don't miss Time Cop and ABC's NFL Monday Night Football. What, what is what Well, doing? we thought we'd show him because he wasn't on that picture of the Monday Night Crew. Oh, I see. Okay, I understand that. Mm -hmm. Is our man. He goes from here to Monday night. Yes. He's the time cop, right? You're going to see a good one Monday night, aren't you? James Jackson brings it back to about the 15-yard line. So what, how do you feel about that Monday night matchup between the Patriots and the Broncos? Well, I, I think it's going to be a great matchup. Both teams undefeated. We've got two of the premier runners in the National Football League in Terrell Davis and Curtis Martin. And we've seen Curtis Martin play a lot at, at the University of Pittsburgh. He's having an outstanding season. We've got two of the best quarterbacks playing, a couple of great receivers. Is that it has everything a football game should have. And again, they're undefeated, so we're looking for a great matchup. The only thing I'd wish for, Lynn, as I'm watching it on Monday night, would be some snow. <laughs> Me too. I, I love snow that. at Denver <laughs> in that old stadium. Oh, thanks a lot, Bob. <laughs> Which good things for me, why Yeah, you? okay, man. <laughs> First down play is James Jackson carrying for Miami, and he'll have a yard or so. Now, talking about teams, you know, he mentioned Pittsburgh. Now, Pittsburgh's a team we need to talk about a little bit. Walt Harris went in there and doing a great job with it. Yep, they're three and one. Beat Miami, and that got everybody's attention, but you can see now that Miami is vulnerable. And so is that fellow. And Pittsburgh, I mean, uh, the, Pittsburgh's going to play Notre Dame in a couple of weeks. <laughs> the Georgia Bulldogs are uh, off to a 4 0 start and were leading Mississippi State, Jackie Sherrill's team, 21 to nothing a while ago. So uh, that's a bit of a surprise to me. Jim Dunn is up there. Got him going yeah, right there. They got some good players, Georgia. Oh, my goodness, that ball should have been caught by Andre King. Moved right through his hands. But you mentioned Georgia, uh, Keith. Uh, Bobo, the quarterback. Robert Edwards is one of the top running backs around. And then uh, Heinz Ward, who was kind of an all-purpose guy. Yeah, he really was, wasn't he? Could do a lot of things. Yeah, we, got, we had to put Washington State in there. Well, I should hope to shout. The alma mater of the Hoss, yeah. See. Well, how, wait, how did Purdue get to the bottom of this list? Well... I mean, they needed to be, if they're not ranked, they should be at least be ahead of Pittsburgh. I would agree with Al that. Alphabetically, they said, alphabetically is a little bit <laughs> The ball is knocked down by Sam Keller. Sam coming across, a linebacker of exceptional speed, <laughs> slaps it down. So Scott Covington is unable to generate offense again. And they'll have to fight. This will be the eighth punt in the ball game for Miami. And Peter Warrick is waiting for it. I'm sure Andy Crossell is thrilled to death to see Peter Warrick back there. He hit it, though. 
He runs him all the way back to the 36 yard line. Looking for a little help from his friends. And he got it. He got it. Down to the 24 yard line. That kid's got a knack for it. All this business at the start of it, all that is fake over there. When he started to our left, he really wanted to get everybody over there, the Hurricanes, and then come back to our right side. That's where all these guys were. That was a 46-yard punt. That's the good news. Bad news is it came back 40 yards the other way, so it's a net six. And Florida State's in business at the Miami 23. And this is Travis Miner, who scored two touchdowns already today. Florida State was off last week, but two weeks ago against Clemson, here's Pete Warwick from the 10-yard line. He's in the 40 to the 50. He's in the 40. I always want to do this. <laughs> <laughs> well, he almost had one on this last return. You know, he's good at running him back, but give some credit to the coaching staff for setting up the special teams and, and getting them ready to go. On second and nine, it's Lamar Glenn, one of his uh, rare carries, and he makes something of it, and here's John. Keith in the ACC, Virginia and Wake Forest. Aaron Brooks keeps this one flushed out of the pocket and takes it 26 yards for the touchdown. The point after, they take a one-point lead, 14-13. You are also talking about Pitt and the surprising start. Today, Pitt is facing Temple. They find themselves down by seven. Keith, back to you. My goodness, Temple's starting to step up a bit, aren't they? That's uh, Travis Miner carrying, and he'll get inside the five-yard line. John mentioned Wake Forest in that update, Keith. Uh, Wake Forest is another team that's uh, done a nice job. Uh, Air Force is 5-0. and oh. Air Force is... Uh, Fisher DeBerry's boys. Huh? The Morgan brothers are kind of taking over the quarterback position <laughs> for the Air Force. Yes, the last they have. Uh-huh. Oh, and now Blaine. Second down and goal. In traffic. It's Blaine twisting into the end zone. Touchdown for the Seminole. Well, they're starting to blow him away. And before the day is done, I, I promised Craig Rothberg I'd mention his name. He does our computer stats, and I missed him last week. And since we're in his hometown, He's working hard now. Janikowski for the point. Nice easy swing of the leg. And it's right through the middle. 47 to nothing for the Seminoles. Had a great practice today. I know you guys are hungry, but this new big king gave me an idea for a new play. So listen up. Quarterback takes off tackle, flips the ball, the guard pulls. We hand off to the wingback. Wingback is up to go for a touchdown. Any questions? Coach, can I eat my blocker now? The new Big King from Burger King, flame broiled with 75% more beef. It's like a Big Mac, except it's bigger and tastes better. Get one with fries and a drink for just $2.99. Got any more new plays, Coach? Some of the most admired cars you'll see are owned by the guys who know cars best. They're ASC certified master mechanics. And the number one brand of motor oil these guys use in their own cars and trucks is Valvoline, makers of Durablend, the leading semi-synthetic for a cleaner engine due to better control of harmful deposits. So use the oil the mechanics who take care of your car use to take care of theirs. Valvoline. People who know use Valvoline. Kids are cool. Too cool for a family car. So check out a new Chevy Lumina LTZ. It could be the best disguised family car on the road. You'd never guess by looking at it, but no six-passenger car in its class offers more standard safety features for the money. So don't worry. Get a Lumina LTZ. If that doesn't make your kids think you're cool, nothing will.
Well, some of the crowd of 80,165 have gone home. They figure the issue has been resolved, and they're right. It's 47 to nothing, Florida State. Olds will kick it away now to the Hurricanes, who are worn out. Plan was to wear them down because they're so short of people, and they've done that. Old liner slapped down and picked up by James Jackson. And Jackson's going to be called out of bounds back on the six-yard line. Here's funny. Well, Keith, we've been talking about the level of talent discrepancies between these two teams, but let's talk about the Florida State alumni who are playing in the National Football League who are showing you not only their talent, but the kind of training they had going into the National Football League. I'm talking about they got two guys like Peter Boulware and Warwick Dunn because this month in the National Football League, those players are named NFL Rookies of the Month. And as a rookie to come into the National Football League to have that kind of impact and then both be from the same school is a credit to the Florida State program, the kind of athletes they recruit, and how well they train them and work with them while they're here, Keith. Yep, no question. And this is James running around and finding very little. There's another guy on the field that's going to be very obvious when he goes. His name, of course, is Andre Wadsworth, number 85. In talking to him yesterday, I talked to him about which team, and where he would like to be drafted, and uh, this is what he said. Hopefully, I can play in a decently warm cli climate. But you know, you know, you get paid to do your job, and once you know, you go to the bank. I think you can buy yourself a good jacket. <laughs> <laughs> I like that, Andre. <laughs> <laughs> Second down and nine. Gets the pass away. Oh, my goodness. It was almost intercepted for a touchdown by Stevens. He had it in his hands, and the ball fell away. So, Dimitro Stevens almost had himself a touchdown. I also asked him another question about this element of playing uh, football and, and college and professional and all of that. And there's more to this man than you can get out of a short, uh, cryptic conversation. But I have one more answer I would like to have you hear about his attitude toward playing the game and whether or not he wants to play inside or outside. So right after this play, we'll run it for you. Third down and nine. And nothing doing. That play is stopped right at the line of scrimmage. So this is the answer from Wadsworth on whether or not he wants to play outside or inside. I won't play defensive end. You know, but if they wanted to play inside, right now I'm, I'm around 268, 272. I fluctuate between those two weights. But I have a frame that can put on weight because last year I was 285. And um, if they want to play inside, I'll play inside, you know, because, you know, you can't complain. You know, it's a privilege to play football, and I look at it that way. And, and not too many guys get a chance to do that. It's like winning the lottery. He'll make a good pro. And I like his attitude. He'd be better off outside. He is so quick quick off the ball and very intelligent good kid D Feaster is waiting for the Miami punt if and when they get it away here with five minutes and 27 seconds remaining to play in the ball game that is about what most folks probably expected 47 to nothing Florida State unsportsmanlike conduct on the defense Miami's not going to have to punt, I don't think. It should give them a, uh, a first down. It's fourth and 14. Doesn't that carry an automatic? No, I don't think it's automatic, but I think it's 15-yard penalty. And if my math holds up, I think it should be a first down. The dead ball, unsportsmanlike conduct on the defense. So it's not a flagrant foul type of thing. It is just unsportsmanlike conduct, and it can be, and that, that's a, 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 it covers a broad range of things, too. So, uh, could have been celebration. Oftentimes is these days. Maybe a little taunting there. 
But it's a first down at the 17 yard line for Miami. So Andy Crossman very thankfully goes back and sits down. That's not, that is not what it was. Don't, don't get upset about that. That's just some normal celebrating. You can do that in college football. Edger and James trying to find some daylight and can't. Everything around him is red. Well, Hoss, we've been talking about teams. What about individuals that have been doing good this season? You know, uh, anybody surprise you with their performances? Yeah, I'll tell you somebody surprises me. I'm frankly surprised at the way Moss has played up at Marshall. I know that Randy Moss is supposed to be a super duper athlete and all that stuff. Had all this kind of trouble. He was here at Florida State and all those things. But he has really been something up there with 38 catches. I agree. I, you know, and the other guy I like is Tavian Banks. Yep. At, at Iowa, came out of nowhere and is just a, well, he'll get a big test today, though. Well, you, you had your finger on him in your book, yeah. right before, preseason book. Yeah. You named him, your guy. But, I picked uh, him a preseason All-American. And uh, Tim Sherman, the quarterback at Iowa, has done very well, too. You know who I like, too, is um, uh, Tim Couch, the, the quarterback at, uh, at Kentucky. You know, the... Uh, how Mummy went in there and has really helped that program around. Just How about Doug Johnson down in Florida? Yeah, stepped in. Of course, Steve's offense at Florida is, is kind of set up, and I think Mummy did the same thing at Kentucky. Uh, Third and one here on this play. Very late getting the play off. I don't think they made it. Yeah, maybe, but uh, very slow developing play. For a quick pop play where you wanted to pick up a yard, it took a long time to get somebody's feet moving in the north-south direction. There's another guy that's come out of nowhere, as far as I'm concerned, and that's uh, Cecil Collins at LSU. Yeah, good point. He yeah. ran for 232 yards against Auburn. Yeah, with the injury to uh, Falk down there, he's he was the backup, and he just stepped in, and is, uh, heck, he's, uh, he's at the top two or three rushers in the nation. And Zeroway of West Virginia has been putting on quite a show, too. Cecil the Diesel. <laughs> Cecil the Diesel. <laughs> I agree with Zeroway. I, when I saw him last year against uh, Nebraska gain over 200 yards, you convinced me. Here's a guy right here, I think, that'll be around for a time, too. James, Edger and James. He's big enough, quick enough, strong enough. I think you'll, you'll hear from him down the road. Time permitting. Stay tuned for the thrifty car rental post game report featuring scores and highlights from around the country. Where we're we going, John and Todd, you're all going to have about 25 minutes, so <laughs> take a drink of water and stand by. <laughs> Get some highlights ready. <laughs> Joe Three Tiller. To how, go. About, how about Joe Tiller at Purdue going in and turning that program around? Yeah, if you wasn't at Purdue, you wouldn't know who he was. No, I would too, now. It's not fair. <laughs> you got to be fair, you know. Uh, pressure, Covington gets it away and completes it. But it's going to be well short of first down. So it'll be third down and about seven. Joe came from Wyoming over to Purdue, and is, he's a good football coach and a good guy. He's kind of a guy, kind of gruff, but he's the kind of a guy that uh, you, you like being around and playing for. We've got an injury to a Miami player, and while this is going on, let me tell you, our coordinating producer of ABC's college football is Tony Tortorisi. Today's game produced by Jay Rothman, directed by Chip Dean, technical director Gary Larkins, associate producer Margaret Schaefer, associate director Fred King, production manager is Lynn Cadden, our technical operations manager is uh, Jim Lakata, our assistants to the producer Chapman Downs, Jason Lewis, statistician Mark Dometto, spotter Kelly Hayes, and the computer stats, Mr. Craig Rothberg. Lots of people come to Napa looking for hard-to-find auto parts. And I tell them, the only time parts are hard to find is when you're trying to find them someplace else. Right now, you'll find Napa halogen headlights for as low as $4.99. You can just pick up a Napa part and feel the quality. When you look at the price, it feels even better. Your truck will look even better with these assorted truck accessories. Up to $10 off with mail-in rebate. Only at Napa. Hi, I'm expecting a fax. Room 212 wants the ammunition to deal with her toughest clients. Nothing. Hi, Hi. Davies 212. I called earlier. Right, fax. It hasn't come yet. I need it for a meeting. Excuse me, Miss Davies? Oh, just came in. Thank you so much. Good morning, everyone. Business services by Marriott. When you're comfortable, you can do anything. 
How do you stop a rhino from charging? How? Travel with Joseph Van Oss' photo safari to Kenya's land of the Maasai. How do you stop rhino? Stop a rhino from charging. And you'll see a culture and a wildlife like no other on earth. How do you stop a rhino from charging? But bring your visa card. How do you stop a rhino from charging? Ah! Give it an American Express card. Because <laughs> this photo safari doesn't take American Express. Wait till they hear this in Nairobi. Visa, it's everywhere you want to be. It is third and six now, with 2.45 to play in the game. Pressure, pressure, pressure. Pass completed. Nice throw by Covington. Pass completed to Omar Roll, and you can move the chains for Miami. Right, Keith. Nice uh, read by Covington. A nice throw and catch. Our sideline coordinator today is Dave Hatter, and uh, the fellows who are about to go to work College football today in New York, produced by Charles Coplin, directed by Kelvin Haywood, our technical director Gary Boyarski, and the remote coordinator, Indiana's favorite son, Bruce Coplin. He's got it. Daryl Jones, who has world-class sprinter speed. And there's a flag back up the field that may bring it back. On the defense. It's on the defense, so the play is going to stand. An insignificant play at the end of a 47 to nothing blowout. But this is a big play for Jones, number one. As you mentioned, Daryl Jones is from Texas. Sprinter speed. He's a true freshman learning the ropes. This will go a long way toward building his confidence for the rest of the season. Todd Fryer was defending. And so with the penalty, the chains are going way downfield. <clears throat> they might even avoid the shutout. 207 to play. I see some of the uh, some of the big boys going back out there. Tony Brant Bryant for one. I don't think the Noles want to give up a touchdown. Howard's still out there. Samari Rose back out there. Covington puts it in the corner of the end zone, and it is too deep. They're all back out there. Keith. They're all the whole starting bunch out there because they want their shutout against Miami because Miami has abused the Seminoles over the last 12 years. Well, they have. They've won eight of the last 12, and, you know, before Florida State was anybody, Miami was the big dog, and to beat Miami was a big deal. And, uh, Florida State just as recently has done well against them. Second down and goal from the 10 yard line. Coming to the quarterback. left roars and the Noles celebrate on their way to the bench. They did not want to give up the shutout. The last time that Miami was shut out was Alabama in the regular season back in 79. That was 30 to nothing. And it was Howard Schnellenberger's first year. See roll number two. He's throwing it for the receiver inside. Does he catch it? Yep. Good catch. Yep. Got his arms underneath and good vision. Well, Keith, so, what do you think? You think you think the rest of the uh, the ACC is catching up with Florida State? You see, Clemson only losing by seven points to uh, the Florida State, North Carolina. Virginia. I think they take heart from it. I don't think there's any question about it. Chris Wanky is now in the quarterback, and he's the guy that's going to duel. Uh, uh, Dan Kendra for the quarterback job next year. I think that uh, George Welch up at Virginia has helped uh, the ACC uh, quality of football. George Welch, I think, is a great football. Well, I, I think there's no and doubt uh, that, that, that FSU going into the conference elevated. It. It. Elevated the whole yes, place. Had, had to. Yep. And you know that uh, Tommy West over at Clemson is uh, bringing that group back. And Clemson historically has been a good and, football And Mac Brown at uh, North Carolina has done a great job. NC State uh, started out very yeah, well with some prizes and played very well. South Carolina's got a good coach and some things to do over there. Here's Lynn Swan. Thank you, Keith. I got William Floyd down here. The 49ers have a little time off. 
I got to ask you, why you come all the way back and watch this ball game? This is the biggest grudge match that I know. These guys beat us two years on the world, in a row on the wide right. And it's just great to see them beat Miami like this. You were upset when you thought they were going to score. <laughs> but you know what? I was upset, but I knew if they put the first team defense back in there, they weren't going to score, and that's what happened. That's what the rivalry is about, isn't it? It's all about this. I miss college so much. I love this. Seeing the, the chop and being back home for this is lovely. William, thank you very much. Thank you. Keith? How did you like San Francisco? <laughs> <laughs> Time ticket along. Our Chevrolet most valuable players of the game are Wayne Starks of Miami, 10 tackles and an interception. For Florida State, Thad Busby, 20 out of 31, 230 yards and a couple of touchdowns. Chevrolet donating $1,000 to each of the school's general scholarship funds in the name of those players to help students in financial need. And the game is done. The final score, Florida State, 47, the Miami